Good morning. My name is Miss Ellie White, and we are here to talk about Matthew, exciting book, chapter six. And I wanted to start with this morning. Verse seven. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for your much speaking. A, B, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. And then if we jump over to verse 19, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moss nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And the last point is on verse 27, which says, Which of you by thought can add one cubit to his stature? Probably one of the most mistranslated verses in the Bible. So let's go back to the first one. Be not using vain repetitions as the heathens do. A.K.A. 27 Hail Mary, we'll get rid of the lie you told last night. Well, it doesn't say in any single scripture in the Bible that if you pray to somebody else other than God, other than Jesus, his son, that came to die on the cross for us, that you can be saved. And certainly saying a Hail Mary 27 times does not wash away your sins. Why would Jesus be sent to earth to die on the cross, a horrible and utterly totally heinous that if there was some other easy way to do it like walk on your knees for 10 feet and then i will forgive you for hitting your brother um it just it's not true okay and we need to know that for all the verses that are taken out of the bible and we're not just picking on the catholics here every single religion has verses that they ignore or take out or manipulate or change then you're leading people to hell and you're responsible for those souls so don't let anyone trick you into losing your eternal soul because the devil is a master at trying to get really close to the truth but then missing it so that you miss getting inside the door. It's like walking through your house in the middle of the night and you bang into the doorpost and you go, oh well, and you turn around and you go back to bed. You, If you miss the truth, you've missed the truth. And this is not for a drink of milk. This is for all of eternity. So please be very, very careful. Read the Bible for yourself. Do your own research. And I'm not talking about all those thousands of books that are out there that explain everything. Okay? You need to look at a real Bible, like a King James Bible. Read it for yourself. And let the Holy Spirit teach your heart what it's about. And if it all seems totally weird and foolish and disgusting and doesn't make sense, then you're probably not saved because you need to ask Jesus in your heart in order to have the Holy Spirit explain things to you. So, part number two, lay not up yourselves treasures on the earth, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. We need to do what Jesus said and sell everything that we have and give it to the poor and give it to our Christian brother and sister in need. And, you know, I've gone around through the town I live in and passed out flyers for two years trying to get someone to donate a camper so that I could go and donate the rest of my life for free to work on the Sioux Indian Reservation. we have got 300 teenagers committing suicide or trying to commit suicide every single month because nobody cares about them. And they're so poor because of their treaty that, you know, they have a little one-room shack they intended as a storage house for, you know, crops or supplies was never intended for them to live in. They thought they would live in their tent for free. Well, now his son and his son's son and the son's son's sons are all living in the one room with windows busted out, no paint on the walls, um, because they're scared that if they fix anything, they'll lose their treaty. And I just need a viable house type vehicle, a small camper and motorhome, to go in to help and, and donate the rest of my life or whatever it turns out to be to helping these poor people that have been so abused and mistreated and misunderstood. So if anyone out there has one, feel free to contact me. Um, the third verse that I wanted to bring attention to is verse 27, which says, 
Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Okay. If you see a Bible that translates that to an inch, throw it out and go back to a King James Bible. You know, God was trying to make a point here. A cubit is 18 inches. And God is saying, you know, God takes care of the birds and the flowers. And they don't worry and they don't toil. They just know and have faith in their hearts that God is going to take care of them. And you sit there worrying and worrying and worrying and work yourself into a heart attack and can't sleep all night. And why? Because God says, you know what? You're acting like if you worry enough, you could wake up in the morning and be 18 inches taller. And this just absolutely isn't true. God's trying to show us how ridiculous we are by worrying, by thinking that we can do anything by ourselves. We need to call on God for anything that we need. And if our heart is right and pure and we're repented before God, he will take care of those needs for us. So the reason why God said a cubit is to show you that you're not going to wake up tomorrow morning and be 18 inches taller. All right? You know, depending on stress and how you sleep, you might be able to twist or straighten a spine or a leg a little bit and actually be an inch taller tomorrow morning. God wasn't trying to make it real. He was trying to show us how ridiculous we are when we worry and we don't come to God in prayer. And that means when you give it to God, leave it with God. And pray with him enough that you know his voice and he knows your voice. Or you might be a wolf and not one of the sheep. Thank you so much. Feel free to contact me at buffalostudy at yahoo.com or paypal.me forward slash buffalostudy at yahoo.com. Especially if you know anybody who's got an old motorhome, preferably a small, short little thing. Yeah, I can get in and out of the gas station with. But, um, you know, so that... We can continue the ministry for people who need it. I mean, I'm trying to sell my house to see if I can get 50,000 cans of veggies to send to Venezuela. But um, no buyers yet, so say prayers for both of those two things. God bless you and hope to see you in heaven someday. Thank you so much. Ellie White.